Now you've probably seen the video with Carter Crew where they put Sam Gorsuch's face into all sorts of images. Obviously, you wanted to do that yourself. Then you realized what kind of hardware they ran it on and went into the bathroom to cry for three hours. Me too, buddy. Me too. Until I found out that you can do all this without owning any hardware at all, without installing anything. So I tried it, put my face in, and these are some of the results with no editing. Now let me show how you can do it as well. Now what you need to get started is images of yourself. So I've pulled together a bunch of images of me from Facebook and then I walked around my house and took pictures of me in various angles. It's important that you have a variety of these and with different backgrounds. I'd say that a number of between 10 and 30 images is a good start. Then we need to resize these to fit 512 by 512. So we're doing that by going to a site called burr.net and then just inputting all of these. And you're going to see here how you can crop these. So make sure your face is in them. You don't need to be super centered or anything. Just make sure that you're in the images. Save them. And now we're going to input these into Dream Booth and create our model. So I'm going to link all the important links in the description below. So this is Dream Booth with Google Collab. And running in this way won't require anything from your own computer. Google will run all the hardware, so you can run this on any computer or even your cell phone. Now there are, however, some prerequisites. Since this is all kind of put together with duct tape and it's all brand new technology. When I say brand new, this collab has only been uh, live for a couple of hours. And we're all new at this learning, testing, processing, doing our best to move this further on. So anything I say here today could change by tomorrow, but I hope it will get you on the process of learning. So take anything I say here with a grain of salt. For example, as of today, it's only possible to run this with a Tesla T4. So if it, you would get a, an A100, for example, it won't run. So you need to disconnect your runtime and try again until you get a T4. This will probably change in the coming days, but let's work on what we have right now. So we're going to start by running each cell. So we have a T4. That's all good. We're going to install the requirements. This is going to take yeah, some time, but I'll speed this up and catch up with you when it's done. All right, let's move on to the next and install this. Now you need to make sure that you have a Hugging Face account. And uh, if you don't, you can go to huggingface.co and create an account up here. And then you're going to want to request access to the Stable Diffusion uh, model. So I'm going to link this below. When you have logged in and enter this site, scroll down, you press I've read license uh, and agree with these terms, access repository. And while you're in Hugging Face, go into your account settings. Go to Access Tokens, make a new token. Let's name this Dream Booth. Put it at right, generate a token. Copy that, and we're going to save that for Dream Booth. So let's run this cell. Now we're running this cell, and this is where we need to input the token. Login. And these are the settings that we want to change. So the class name is dependent of, of what your subject is. Let's say, for example, that you take images of yourself and you are a man. Then this could, for example, be guy or man or person. Let's put this as man for now. This folder is where I'm going to upload all my images. Let's change this to Seb input, so I know which one that is. And let's change this one to Seb Output. Let's run this and then open our folder structure. Let's go to Data, Seb Input, which is the newly created folder that we created while running this cell. And here we're going to place all of our images. Now the images are being uploaded and it's fairly quick. Now in the next cell here, the instance prompt, that is what you're going to use to prompt yourself into the image. So let's change this to my name and let's change this to our class name, which is what we set up here. 
You could also leave this, which would read from that. But let's put man in there. The rest, we're going to leave it to default. Now the learning rate here. Geopanna recommends 1e-6, but for ease of use, let's just leave this at default for now. If you want to learn more about these settings, you can go into uh, Dreamboot Discord. I can link that in the description. We're going to up the max training steps. Usually a number between 1000 and 1500 is a good start. So let's go with 1000 for now. The more steps you put in, the longer it will take. And it's a quite time intensive process. Let's run this. And when I say quite a long time, I mean quite a long time. It could be an hour or two or even more, depending on how many steps you put in. Now at first here, it will generate your class images. And remember we put class man. So it will first learn from the stable diffusion model what man is and gather those images. And after that, it will compile a model based on your input images together with man. Now the model that we created is saved in Google Collab under models. This is Seb output, so this is the model. Now, if you were to close this Google Collab, this would all disappear and you would have to retrain your model. So either you would have to save that by, by starting a new cell, putting in zip-r, the name of your zip file, then you put content models and your model name, which in this case would be Seb output. Then you would run that. Now this would be a pretty large file and it will be saved in diffusers, examples, dream booth. And when that finishes, you're going to see a zip here. You just press that zip and press download. It will take quite some time. Uh, it's almost faster to just retrain the model. Just make sure that you make all the images you want to do before you quit Google Colab. So the training is now completed. So we can go down, run the inference. And this next cell here. And while that's loading, we can start inputting our prompt. So let's try. Pencil drawing of man. So this is your token name that you set above. And this is the class name. You should always use the token name and the class name together. Let's set the batch size to two. And uh, let's see what we get. As with every other stable diffusion setup, you can change the steps here and the strength scale here. And here we are, our first samples of images from me. Now to get cooler results, you're gonna have to look at prompting a little more interesting than this. But for a first try, I think these are pretty sweet. Now let's look at some of the results I got here. I think this one's super cool. It's in a Diablo-esque type universe. Here I am as a soldier out in the jungle. This pencil drawing I think is fantastic. Captures the hair, very cool. This, I don't even know what it is, but some kind of futuristic me. This is me in Game of Thrones. And here I am again in some kind of game universe. These turned out pretty sweet, all of them. And this is, uh, well, I don't know, some kind of dream me, an older dream me. And here I am in a spacesuit or a futuristic spacesuit at least. And this is an older style painting. And here I am in Lord of the Rings. So let's say the results aren't what you're looking for. Well, I would recommend you to go to Dream Booth's Discord server. I'll link that in the description. And there are a couple of tips you can try. Here's a post from Yopena where he goes through a few options. Option one here, they're not looking at you at all. Make sure that you have your token and your class and not just your token. So remember, this should be, this is my name and then man. If it still doesn't look like you, you didn't train long enough. So you can try option three. You could try token, class in a portrait photograph, token, class in an 85 millimeter, whatever, whatever. Just remember to put token class in several times. However, if they're looking like you, but they're all looking like your training images, well, you might have trained too long or the images were too similar. Perhaps you took all your images in your bedroom and didn't change the angle at all. You can adapt that with your prompt. And stable diffusion has a lot of merit to whatever you type first. So if you have overtrained your, your model, just put your token class further back in the prompt. So I hope this is going to help you to create some cool images of yourself or whatever you choose as your input model.
If you like this content, please like and subscribe. It's going to help me a lot. Good luck. Have fun. Create some great art. And if you have any questions or comments, just put them below. I'll make sure to read all of them. Have a great day now.